No, I, I forgot to do it. Alright. Okay. So, we've done the example. Alright. Now, now we start on the reverse. Um, we've done the left to right part of the proof. It's an if and only if proof, so always two directions, two part proof. So now we start on uh, from right to left, which is usually, in pure math, that's usually the first one to be done. But uh, for didactic reasons, SIPSA uh, prefers to do the easier one first. Uh, that's fair enough. Okay, so now, now we go in the opposite direction. We will go... Um, uh, we will now do the if part. Yeah. So... Uh, so we'll go, uh, we'll do P, F, Q, and that corresponds to Q, arrow, P, right? Uh, now for the, what we did before, the forward direction, so P only if Q, that is P arrow Q, you know, if P then Q. Uh, what we did, um, we found a way to, uh, we, we converted a grammar into a PDA. Okay? We, we wanted to show that um, for, uh, if there's a grammar, uh, it, there's an equivalent PDA for it. Right? That, that was what we, that's what we just finished. So, and the main idea, as you know, said several times, is that the PDA simulates the grammar. Okay? Now we want to go the other way. So we're trying to show the two are equivalent. So we need, and it's an if and only if proof. So now, um, instead of uh, finding a PDA that's equivalent to the grammar, we do the reverse. Now, now um, we. Uh, we need to find a grammar that behaves like a PDA. Before, we had a PDA that was behaving like a grammar. Now, we have to have a, we want a grammar that behaves like a PDA. Huh? <laughs> That's not obvious, right? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely harder, right? So it's, you know, and that's not easy, okay? So uh, when you're uh, trying to program in a sense, as we put quotes around, Trying to program a grammar is harder than programming an automaton, right? Now, uh, these two parts to this if and only if proof, each is, uh, Sipsa makes a lemma. So now, here's the uh, lemma statement, equivalent to a proof statement, a uh, theorem statement. Um, so lemma 2.27 in the text, okay, here, here it is. So, uh, so if, if you have a PDA that's... Uh, recognizing some language, then it, well it refers to the language, right? then that language is context-free. That's, that's what you've got to prove. Okay? So, uh, how do you... So we're, we're trying now to create a grammar, a, a CFG, call it G, call the grammar G, and call the machine P. Right? So just to keep things simple. So the PDA is just P, you know, P for PDA, obviously. And the, the grammar C of G is just called G, G for grammar, obviously. So P and G, right? Uh, so you're trying to uh, create now a grammar. You, know, you start with the machine, you create the grammar, rather than the other way around. So uh, now to show they're equivalent, what do you, what do you need to do? Well, um, you need to uh, create a grammar that generates all the strings that P accepts. So, and then hence that, that, that grammar, that G, would be equivalent to P. Okay? Because um, you know, they, they describe the same languages. Uh, all right, so that's, that's the essential strategy. So... Um, So, in other words, as uh, G, it, it should, now it's a grammar, right? But grammars generate strings, okay? So this, this G should, should generate a string, uh, the same string, if, 
that same string uh, makes the PDA go from its start state to its accept state. In other words, the PDA uh, recognizes it. Right? So, uh, now remember which, which way you're going. Right? So in this case, um, we're doing the only, only if. We're going, we're going from only if. P only if Q. We're going from we're going from left to right. So we're starting with the machine, we're starting with the PDA, and uh, we're generating a grammar. Like, uh, so see, if a language is context-free, context-free language, that means, by definition, that means that there's a grammar that uh, generates it. Okay? So to show that this language is context-free, that's, that's the same thing as saying, uh, that there's a, uh, a grammar, a uh, context-free grammar, C of G, that uh, generates that, that language. In other words, whatever string uh, is accepted by the PDA, the, an equivalent um, grammar, G, uh, will generate the same string. Okay? What, what I've just said is sort of essential. Okay? Uh, if you're not following, go and rewind. All right. Okay. So, uh, so if if P uh, recognizes a string, then G has to generate that same string. That's what it boils. That's what it boils down to. Okay. Now, how does how does a PDA recognize a string? Well, it, it starts in its start state and it reads the string and it ends in the accept state. So you have to generate a grammar that behaves in the same way. So you need, you need now to, to create a grammar that behaves like a PDA. Now, before it was the other way around. Right? We, we had a PDA that behaved like a grammar. Well, now you've got to create a grammar that behaves like a PDA. And the, this, this grammar generates the same string that is accepted by the PDA. Okay, you follow, follow me so far. Right. Okay. Now this grammar that we're going to create, uh, it does a little bit more than just that. Uh, it makes things easier for us. Uh, we, we're going to have um, for for each pair of states P and Q in the in the PDA, we're going to have a, a variable in the grammar, and we'll call that variable you know, big A, you know, capital letter as usual, uh, with suffix PQ. So, so for each pair of states in your machine, in your automaton, we're going to have a grammar, uh, sorry, a, a variable uh, labeled big A suffix PQ. Right? So you have a different pair of P's and Q's, well you have a correspondingly a different variable that will go into your grammar. And you may ask, well, why are you doing this? Uh, well, that won't become clear. <laughs> like, like for the next two sessions also, uh, we're just preparing. You know, we're setting things up and you won't understand why we're setting things up the way we are until, well, the denouement, you know, the, the end, the end proof when we, when we get there. But that'll be next board, right? So uh, you're going to have to take it on trust for the moment. Right. Uh, now, this this variable here. Now, uh, it's a variable in a grammar, and what does this variable do? Well, it uh, as you keep substituting it because it's a, a grammar that we're trying to create. As we substitute, keep substituting this, uh, it'll end up. Uh, that it'll, it'll generate all the strings that can take the machine from state P with an empty stack to state Q with an empty stack. In other words, it's behaving, the grammar is behaving like a PDA. Okay? Now, what I've just said is critical. Uh, think about it. You know, I'll say it again. Um, so what is this, what is this variable, this AEPQ, what does it do? It, it generates all the strings, all the strings, that that uh, that would take the machine P 
uh, from state, uh, sorry, um, the PDA, capital P, from state little p uh, with an empty stack to uh, a state little q with an empty stack. And you may say, so what? Uh, we'll think about it because that's the heart of the proof. Uh, because those, those strings would... Uh, uh, no, I think I'll wait. I'll wait a bit because we need <laughs> we need an inductive proof later to make it all hang together. I'm jumping ahead a little, but okay. All right. So um, so summarizing in the grammar for each pair of states in the machine, you know, P, P and Q in the machine, create a variable, a P Q, and this variable. Uh, will show generates all the strings in the that all this variable generate you know, using the grammar will generate all the strings that the machine the automaton big P uh, all those strings that would take big P the PDA from uh, state little p with nothing on the stack to uh, another state, little q, with nothing on the stack. Okay, so, and then, you yeah, know, we'll use this later in the next two sessions and more. So, uh, it's quite an elaborate and a long proof, but, uh, you know, along the way, uh, memorize the various steps and the various tools that we're going to need, like, like, like this variable for each pair of states, pq, in, in your PDA.